so far uh, i have discussed with you various components of a spectrometer starting from uh, beam tailoring at the reactor to detectors but uh, neutron being a spin half magnetic nuclear particle uh, the few more important parameters are the neutron polarization for some experiments and the capability to flip the neutron spin because often in magnetic neutron scattering we need to polarize the beam of neutrons and then use it for scattering experiments and sometimes even analyze the polarization of the reflected beam so in this lecture i will introduce you to neutron polarization <coughs> neutron polarizations and very briefly about spin flippers because these designs can be intricate and elaborate and if you get in details then we might not be able to reach the target of neutron diffraction so i'll be briefly discussing spin flippers and neutron polarizers now we know that neutron is a spin half particle a magnet with minus 1.91 nuclear magneton which is of course the nuclear moment is much lesser than what we have for electron nearly 2000 times weaker but it's a tiny magnet which can penetrate deep and sometimes for many magnetic studies we need to polarize the neutron beam that means with respect to some direction the neutron beam will either have plus of spin or minus of spin and also for such experiments often we need to flip the polarization of the neutron beam from plus half to minus half or vice versa so so far the point that i have discussed direction yes we get the direction defined using various kinds of collimators in pile collimators as well as solar collimators we get the energy of the beam defined using monochromators if we want a broad beam then using velocity selectors or even sometimes using filtered neutron beams so direction energy how they have to be defined we have discussed now comes the polarization polarization can be done by various means using bragg diffraction from a magnetized crystal using super mirror reflection and also presently Uh, a very novel polarizer called helium 3 transmission polarizer are used in some few advanced neutron sources so i will give brief introduction to these techniques now it is uh, i will prefer to start with an expression for bragg diffraction from a magnetic crystal the derivation of this expression is long so i will skip that but i will give you the expression for intensity of the bragg reflection which has got nuclear part magnetic part and various terms as i define so if there is a k is a unit vector along the momentum transfer and if mu is the unit vector along the magnetic moment in general i can consider this uh, happening from a plane sample then q is a vector q is a vector which basically if i take out the component of mu that is along the k direction then i get this q vector once i define the vector then the bragg intensity is given as f n square plus q square f m square plus 2 f n f m p dot p dot q p is the polarization of the neutron now this expression i will explain you term by term so i am talking about a sample let me just 
try to give us so which is a crystalline sample crystalline sample which also has got magnetic moments and these magnetic moments are aligned these magnetic moments are aligned and i'm carrying out a bragg diffraction from this sample now here the term if in is the nuclear scattering amplitude which i had defined earlier to you which was actually it was a coherent scattering length to to by iq dot rg if you remember the counterpart of it is a magnetic scattering amplitude so that also looks so here you can see this is the nuclear scattering amplitude which is bj times to the power iq dot rj that q i have replaced it with a g which is a uh, which is a reciprocal lattice vector and then twice pi hx plus ky plus lz is fn square and there is a thermal term there is a de waller factor which i discussed earlier that because of the atom oscillating around its mean position you have a reduction in the bragg intensity and uh, that reduction is given by e to the power minus 2w where it is w is basically I, earlier i had discussed it is sigma square q square where sigma is a root mean square displacement similarly apart from this constant terms which you can just accept for the time being 0.5 g is the landers splitting factor j is the angular moment of the nucleus total j value of the nucleus it is same except for a f which is the magnetic form factor and rest of it is same so we have very similar terms so there are terms which are square of this and there is an interference term so this has got this is nuclear term this is the magnetic term and this is the interference term where p is the polarization of the neutron and q is the vector which i defined just now so now this is the expression of bragg intensity coming from a certain plane of a crystal with magnetic moment at the sides when we write this we can see now q is this in case the q is uh, if the magnetic moment is in plane then you can see that mu dot k will be zero then q is equal to minus mu which is the i mean the unit vector so q square q square is equal to 1 and q is equal to plus or minus 1 when i have in plane the magnetization vector is in plane in that case you see i have got several cases p dot q can be plus 1 or minus 1 and then i is equal to f n square plus f m square q square equal to 1 i have put plus 2 fn fm fn fm and p dot q p is the polarization of the neutron beam so this is what i wrote i have put q square equal to 1 because i have assumed that the magnetization is in plane in that case please note that if polarization please note that this p is not the p vector let me make it capital p i'm sorry let me just make it capital p so that you not get confused uh, this is capital p capital p this is not the vector here and this is also
capital P. This is also capital P. Capital P. So now you can see when Q is 1, when the, the neutron, if it is plus half, this P will be 1. Let us say P will be 1. And when it is opposite to the magnetization of the sample, it will be minus 1. In that case, when P is plus 1, I is equal to, intensity is equal to Fn plus Fm square. <coughs> so this is when the nuclear form factor or nuclear scattering amplitude interferes constructively, constructively with the magnetic scattering amplitude. When P is minus 1, that same is equal to Fn minus Fm square. So then they are in opposite, acting opposite to each other and they are destroy, destroying each other or interfering destructively. I must mention here one thing. When I am talking about magnetic thing, there is one F came, form factor. Now if you remember, earlier when I discussed nuclear scattering, at that time I said that the nuclear scattering potential is a delta function and the delta function does not have any drop as a function of Q because it is at r equal to 0, a delta function and whose Fourier transform is 1 all over Q space. Now for magnetism, I cannot say the same thing. You understand this fact that the tiny nucleus of femtometer size is here, but the magnetism comes from unpaired electrons, unpaired electrons, electrons. So you have nickel, cobalt, iron, these are 3D elements or you have rare earths which are 4F or 6F. That means the these shells are basically not filled and that's why I can consider it as a shell classically in which you have a magnetic mode. So now delta function is Fourier transform as a function of Q is one everywhere acceptable. But this shell, now this has got a finite sub extent of the order of angstrom. And this falls even faster than the form factor I calculated for X-rays for an atom because then you consider the whole sphere. Here it's a shell. So it will fall fast. It will fall fast. So that's why the magnetic peaks or magnetic contribution goes at lower Q's, lower Q's, because at high Q, at high Q, high Q, the magnetic form factor, form factor, factor, falls rapidly. Please remember this. You will get back to this point when we come to actual magnetic neutron diffraction. So now after explaining this thing that uh, sample magnetized in plane and Q is equal to minus mu, Q square equal to 1, that gives me if the polarization is parallel to Q, P dot Q is 1, I have Fn plus Fm square constants apart, they boost each other and they add up the form factor, the magnetic scattering amplitudes. When the neutron has opposite polarization, in that case they don't add up but the magnetic part gets subtracted from the nuclear part. So the picture is somewhat like this. This is the 
scattering vector perpendicular to the plane this is the planes which are reflecting the neutrons not just the external planes of a crystal but they are the reflecting planes now if magnetization is in plane then you have two cases either plus half or minus half and their intensities are different because one is fn plus fm square other is fn minus fm square now i have to look for a reflection like we know that in crystallographic parlance we talk about 110 100 220 reflections so if i get a reflection for which fn is almost equal to fm then the beauty is that fn minus fm is zero and fn plus fm is 2 fn so we have only one polarization so in that case these are the planes of the crystal the neutron comes they are magnetized in plane with plus or minus polarization with respect to the magnetization but because fn is equal to fm so the down part goes to zero and then the bragg reflected beam has it is polarized this is a crystallographic polar crystal polarizer the bragg refracted neutron is polarized and we can use this polarized beam for further experiment so so this is what i want to say that that high polarization is possible in bragg reflected beam and the polarization efficiency is defined as i plus minus i minus plus is the reflected intensity of the up neutron minus is the reflected intensity of the down neutrons and this is given by 2 fn fm fn square plus fm square or when fn is equal to fm the polarization efficiency will be 1 often it is not exactly same but they are close and historically fe3 o4 220 was the first reflection used for polarization the polarization efficiency was not too high it was 95% fcc cobalt gives very good polarization but uh, i must mention that this is uh, cobalt is coo should be small this is not carbon carbon carbonate this is co sorry for this it's a cobalt cobalt it's cobalt this cobalt 92% and iron 8% alloy it gives 22200 plane gives very high efficiency but the issue is that cobalt is a strong neutron absorber so we lose intensity in absorption at present hoysler alloy which is cu2mnal and iron silicon fe3si are two materials that have very similar characteristics as polarizers in both of them the 1 1 1 reflections are match means fn is nearly equal to fm and these are used as neutron polarizing monochromators so these neutron here we not only choose the polarization depending on the bragg angle we also choose the lambda so it monochromatizes so this monochromatizes plus polarizer so hoysler alloy is used in one of the magnetic neutron diffractometers at druva so this is about crystal polarizers where the monochromatization as well as polarization takes place next i will discuss with you about mirror based polarizers so before that i want to bring to notice one thing suppose we are doing diffraction from a magnetized sample that means apart from crystallographic long range order there is magnetic long range order we shall come to later when i deal with specific examples then using this expression these expressions fn plus fm square and fn minus fm square when we add them up because the beam is unpolarized so half the neutrons are coming with up 
spin with respect to the sample magnetization. Half of them are coming with minus of orientation with respect to the sample and the intensity is half of I plus plus I minus from those expressions and they are Fn square plus Fm square. So even for an unpolarized beam, we can find out Fm square through fitting processes and we can find out the magnetic structure with an unpolarized beam for a magnetically aligned samples and this is used I would say most of the time this has been used and I will discuss it under the heading of diffraction from crystallographic samples. Just diffraction plus diffraction to find out magnetic structures. Now I talk about mirror based uh, some neutron polarizers. So one can define refractive index of a medium for neutrons. Now so far we have been talking about the atomic structure of the medium when we talked about neutron diffraction. But at a much lower Q, if I do think of Q which is of the order of let's say 0.1 angstrom inverse then twice pi by Q max let us say twice pi by Q max is about 6 by 0.1 60 angstrom. So for such a low Q scattering experiment the medium does not come as a medium comprising atoms and molecules but as a uniform medium the way we see the medium in case of light. So then in this case we can define the refractive index of a medium for neutron in terms of if it is a non-magnetic sample and uh, I am talking about unpolarized neutron beam then n is given as 1 minus lambda square by pi rho into b coherent where lambda is the wavelength of the neutron rho is the number density of the scatterer and b coherent is the coherent scattering length density in this case you can see for rho some values of rho b coherent n is less than 1 so n is less than 1 we can write n equal to 1 minus delta where delta is of the order of 10 to the power minus 6 for most materials materials in case of neutrons that means you can say it is 0.99999 is that close this means that since n is less than 1 comparing it with our experience with light rays traveling from a denser medium to a rarer medium here the any medium having refractive index less than one behaves like a lighter medium with respect to air or vacuum because its refractive index is less than one so in case of optics we know that total internal reflection takes place in case of neutron for most materials total external reflection will take place and since n is given by so for large b coherent large density this n will be more different from 1 this delta value will increase and that means our total external reflection will take place to a lar up to a larger angle. So in general if I say a refractivity profile as a function of Q or theta because Q is equal to 4 pi by lambda sin theta just like light. So reflected intensity up to certain point it will be 1 because total external reflection takes place and then beyond that critical angle the intensity starts falling. So this is a typical reflectivity curve of a medium. So in brief, that means neutron 
uh, allows the low, especially the long wavelength neutrons or rather low Q ex scattering experiments or that means at grazing incidence the medium behaves like an isotropic medium of a given rho B coherent and total external reflection takes place. So, I have just shown you the experimental data from a silicon wafer and then the silicon wafer you can see up to the critical angle the reflectivity is 1 and then it falls. Actually, when I go to large Q value that falls as 1 by Q to the power 4 known as Fresnel reflectivity but that com that comes later but the fact is that I have a critical angle up to which the medium reflects neutron totally. Now refractive index is less than 1 if there is a magnetized medium then similar to what I did in case of Bragg scattering now apart from B coherent for a magnetic medium we also have a magnetic scattering length which is B magnetic and now this B magnetic depending on the magnetization direction with respect to the neutron spin can either be plus B coherent or B minus it can be either B coherent plus B magnetic or B coherent minus B magnetic. So refractive indices are different for two different spins of neutron. So that means now this angle that draw which I drew here. So now I can have two different critical angles for plus for minus. This is very interesting and you can see that if I go beyond this angle, one spin component gets reflected, the other spin component doesn't get reflected. Interesting. So I will stop now and then I will continue with the same thing. We will introduce to the, now it is for a single medium, I will talk to you about neutron super mirror polarizers. What are super mirrors? These are beyond mirrors. I will discuss in the next module.